A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, set your hearts on the greater gifts. Now I will show you the way which surpasses all the others. If I speak with human tongues, and angelic as well, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong, a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and with full full knowledge, comprehend all mysteries. If I, have great, if I have faith great enough to move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give everything I have to feed the poor and hand over my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not jealous, it does not put on airs. It is not snobbish. Love love is never rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not prone to anger. Neither does it brood over injuries. Love does not rejoice in what is wrong, but rejoices with the truth. There is no limit to love's forbearance, to its trust, its hope, its power to endure. Love never fails. Prophecies will cease. Tongues will be silent. Knowledge will pass away. Our knowledge is imperfect and our prophesying is imperfect. When the perfect comes, the imperfect will pass away. There are in the end three things that last, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Verbum Domini.
nos faubes Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Mateo. On one occasion, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, to you I offer praise. For what you have hidden from the learned and the clever, you have revealed to the merest children. Father, it is true, you have graciously willed it so. Everything has been given over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son but the Father, and no one knows the Father but the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Your souls will find rest, for my yoke is easy, and my burden light. Verbum Domini. We extend a warm welcome to our concelebrants. We welcome back our good friend, Father Maurice Emilou, who is here to record yesterday evening for EWTN Live and to tape a bookmark program for his new uh, book, especially on Catholicism in Africa. And Father spent time here with us as an intern and is now serving in the Fresno area of California. So welcome back, Father. We welcome Father Nicholas from Zambia, who is here as an intern, uh, a student in Rome at Santa Croce. Uh, Father Edmund Klein, who is from the Diocese of Wichita, who is a dear friend of our community, as well as Father Charlie Becker from the Archdiocese of Chicago. I won't call Father Charlie a good friend of ours, but we know him. <laughs> <laughs> Today, the Franciscan family uh, observes the feast of St. Joseph of Cupertino. And I'll just share three little things about his life. One is that he came from a very humble beginning, a very poor family. Uh, and his father was a carpenter, and his mother was very strict in the way she brought up her young son. St. Joseph Cupertino would say later in his life, speaking of how his mother raised him, he said, I think that I made my novitiate while I was still a child. <laughs> and isn't that how our children are to be raised? Um, that there is that guiding hand. We know about St. Joseph of Cupertino that he had a tremendous love for our Lord, truly present in the Blessed Sacrament and that he had a very tender devotion to our Blessed Mother. And he learned these as a child uh, at the knee of his mother and his father. As he got older, he had this uh, desire, this interest to serve the Lord, especially uh, following the example of St. Francis of Assisi. And he had gone first to the Capuchins and it didn't work out there. They found him to be very awkward. Uh, but he went and begged to be accepted to uh, the conventual Franciscans. Uh, and they opened the door to, the, to him. And he had asked just simply to be able to take care of the convent mule. That would be like going today and knocking at the door and saying, I'll take care of your cars. You know, just let me wash the cars and serve the Lord faithfully. And so they gave him admission, and they saw this young man as one who was truly filled with piety, who was very faithful in his life of obedience. Uh, but they also recognized that he was intelligent in a unique way, that he had a knowledge of the mysteries of God, and so they encouraged him to study. Now, on a natural level, St. Joseph of Cupertino was not the brightest bulb in the bunch. And so many times, seminarians like to pray to St. Joseph of Cupertino 
especially on the night before an exam. Because they said about St. Joseph of Cupertino that although he did not possess this theological knowledge naturally or that he learned, he was unable to learn it naturally, it was as if he had some of this knowledge as an infused gift from God. So that's what seminarians are often looking for. Lord, you know, just give me this infused knowledge so I don't have to study. You know, and what we have to remind them of is, but do you have the humility, the obedience, the piety, the simplicity of life of St. Joseph of Cupertino? Um, this is what the Lord gave him, and they credit that really to his, uh, the intensity of his love for God, that he loved the Lord so deeply that he was brought into this knowledge of the mysteries of God. Isn't this what the Lord does? You know, even in our own lives many times, we don't, when we're hearing error, we don't always know exactly what that error is. We can't always articulate it theologically. We look to someone like Father Mitch Pacwa to do that for us and say, explain this. What's, there's something wrong with this. What's wrong with it? And Father, or someone like that will sometimes say, you know it's wrong, and here's where, here's where it is. He'll point out the theological error. But why is it that so many of our lay faithful are able to hear and pick up the, when something isn't quite right? It's because they love the Lord. This is what moves our hearts, that we say, I, I know this truth and I'm brought into a knowledge of these mysteries of God because of the intensity of my love for him, and more importantly, because of the intensity of his love for me. Then the third point about St. Joseph of Cupertino is the thing that we all know about him is that he was often uh, carried up off of the ground in ecstasy throughout his life. He would be caught up so much in his love of God and pondering these mysteries of the Lord that he would literally, his body would be lifted up off the ground. And so as a result, the church has named him as a patron for anyone who travels by air. You know, so if you're going to fly, you ask for the intercession of St. Joseph of Cupertino. One of the biographers said about him that they think he spent over half of his religious life off of the ground. Now, this was a real gift uh, given to this man, this manifestation, really reminding us this is what's to happen in the hearts of each one of us, that we don't get mired down in the things of this world. I'll close the homily with a quote of his and when St. Joseph of Cupertino is saying this very thing. We're not supposed to get mired down in the things of this world. We have to operate in this world, but our hearts our minds are always to be elevated and lifted up to the things that are holy. They said that especially at Mass, when he offered Mass, he was, uh, would go into these ecstasies. Um, and he would have these le experiences of levitation. And as a result, you know, you could about imagine everyone at Mass. They would lose sight of what was going on just watching this saint. And so he was often encouraged in most of his life. He offered Mass privately in the convent chapel rather than uh, publicly. And they would say that when um, he was, uh, there was these three crosses on the property of the friary. And whenever he would meditate or look at those crosses and think about the suffering of Christ for us, the love of Christ for us, he would uh, levitate, he'd go into ecstasy, and he would be carried up to the middle cross, the cross of Christ that he would embrace and kiss with such reverence. Um, we're also told that his, the convent where he lived for a time was not far from Loretto, where the holy house is, the holy house of uh, the Holy Family. And so as St. Joseph was taking up residence at this friary, he saw the dome of this church in the distance, and they said, well, you know, what is that church? He said, they told him that's the shrine of Loretto. 
the holy house of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And St. Joseph Cupertino was immediately caught up in ecstasy, and he flew to the holy house of Loretto to reverence uh, that holy place. I know these things almost sound impossible, but these are historical facts that are recorded in the life of this saint. Um, this is, none of this is uh, just made up. Um, but this is how all of us are to live, following his example. Um, you know, to serve the Lord doesn't mean we have to come from uh, just these profound and noble beginnings. The Lord often calls those that come from humble beginnings. It's a simplicity of life that the Lord's looking for, a poverty, and that's in that the Lord communicates to us and speaks to us. It's not that we have to be, and this is not to put down any, any uh, academic studies or pursuit, but we don't have to be brilliant in order to serve the Lord. You know, this man was just a, a simple man who desired to be faithful to God and his call, and the Lord used him. And then always to remind ourselves by his example, uh, not that we are to be detached from this world, that we are to be consumed with the things of eternal life. And so this is a quote from uh, the writings and the thoughts of St. Joseph of Cupertino. He said, Consider the birds of the air. They come down to the ground to get food, but swiftly fly back into the air. Similarly, the servants of God must stay on the earth only as long as is necessary and soar up quickly again to heaven in spirit to praise and glorify God. Note, too, how careful birds are not to land in muddy places and how they avoid tumbling into the dirt. In like manner, men must not involve themselves in things that defile the soul, but soar aloft again in spirit to glorify the Most High God by their holy deeds.